Hello everybody, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to be talking about Terminator Dark Fate. So let's do a little bit of housekeeping. The Terminator first came out in 1984. It was directed by James Cameron. It starred Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator, who was a cyborg assassin sent back in time from 2029 to 1984 to kill the then Sarah Connor, played by Linda Hamilton, whose son, John Connor, who was not born yet, but would be born later, one day be the leader of the resistance against the machines, who was ruling the world at that time in 2029, in the post-apocalyptic future, so to speak, and then a soldier from the resistance was sent back from that future as well to protect Sarah Connor from the Terminator. At the end of the movie, Sarah Connor successfully killed the Terminator in this huge machine press that basically crushed his head. Now, fast forward seven years to 1991, we have Terminator 2 Judgment Day. By this time, Sarah Connor, still in the Hamilton, has given birth to John Connor, played famously by Edward Furlong, and now a new Terminator has been sent down to kill John Connor. Now this new Terminator is not Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's a different Terminator, but he's more advanced, he's capable of shape-shifting and turning into liquid metal and everything like that. But what the Resistance did, they sent back a reprogrammed Terminator, this now being Arnold Schwarzenegger, they sent him back to protect John Connor from the new advanced Terminator. And in the end, it should come as no surprise that Arnold Schwarzenegger, now playing basically a good Terminator, kills the more advanced Terminator. And in the end, actually, both of them die. Now, fast forward 12 years to 2003, you have Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, which is really most notable for the fact that they introduce a lady Terminator, Christiana Loken, and I'm not going to spend much time on that except to say that is loosely in the timeline, uh, but only memorable for several fight scenes between Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Lady Terminator. Again, he's playing, the, I'll call him a good Terminator. Then you have Terminator Salvation in 2009 with Christian Bales, Sam Worthington. I'm not going to spend much time on that. Deviates a lot from the timeline. Uh, and then you have Terminator Genesis in 2015, which deviates even further from the timeline and it's not really relevant to this uh, discussion because frankly Terminator Dark Fate and and, the, and they make no bones about it they say quite publicly uh, that this is a sequel a rightful sequel to Terminator 2 like throw out Terminator 3, 4, 5 we're going to pick up pretty much from Terminator 2 and for that reason, you have Arnold Schwarzenegger back. Again, he's more of a good Terminator. You have Linda Hamilton back. And you have James Cameron, who directed the first two. You have him back in the mix. He didn't direct, but he produced. Uh, you have him back in the mix, sort of overseeing a lot of this project. So, now, in this sixth installment, what they do here is reassemble key and classic plot points from Terminator 1 and 2 that are very familiar to fans of the original two films. Uh, some people might say they're too familiar, but suffice it to say uh, they don't deviate too far from the farm. They pretty much stay on track with those key plot points that there's a future filled with malicious machines and artificial intelligence and they're capable of developing terminators and they're so uh, concerned about the resistance that they send people back in time to kill you know future resistance leaders essentially now as someone who has seen all the all the films myself seen them in the theaters myself and heavily invested in the franchise and all the characters, I'm going to say I enjoyed the film. I liked it. Now, to be fair, it felt very similar to Terminator 2 
and sort of the tone and the vibe and the plots and everything and the chase scenes it felt very similar to Terminator 2 I'm not gonna lie but I'm totally fine with that I mean I, I like Terminator 2 that's hands down no one disputes that that's the best film in the series so why not have a film that's very similar to that so a lot of people are going to say oh but well, this is totally derivative of Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 why are we going to watch a rehash of these same old plot points etc 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 blah 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 listen with the exception of film critics and movie geeks like us your typical movie goer in 2019 which is in that 15 to 25 year old age range have not seen those movies let's just let's just get that out the way right off the bat those movies the first ones in 1984 the second ones in 1991 they have not seen those movies so this is all fresh material to the current movie going audience let's just get that out the way so stop with the, oh, it's so derivative, it's so similar, blah, blah, blah. Look, stop with that. These are the same people that said that Force Awakens and Rogue One were just derivative of the original trilogy and New Hope, blah, 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 copy and paste, blah, blah, blah. Stop, stop with that. Listen, I'm sad to inform you, but not everyone saw the original trilogy. Not everyone knows who Han Solo is. Not everyone knows who Luke Skywalker is. So stop with the, oh, we've seen this all before, blah, blah, blah. No, no, the vast majority of people in that theater have not seen all this before. So for example, I went with my 15-year-old son. He did not have a clue who Sarah Connor is. I had to explain to him who Sarah Connor was, who John Connor was, how the Terminator factors into their relationship and everything. Now, why doesn't he know those things? Because Sarah Connor was principally only in 1 and 2. She's not really in 3, 4, and 5 and all that kind of stuff. So someone in 2019 really has no idea who Sarah Connor is. Now you're going to say, yeah, but she was she was like heavily in 1 and 2. How, how would you not know who Sarah Connor is? How could your son not know who Sarah Connor is? I mean, it's, you must be living under a rock if you don't know who Sarah Connor is. All right, well, let me explain why my 15-year-old son doesn't know who Sarah Connor is. Now, I could give you the short answer or the long answer. I'll give you the short answer. The short answer is because he doesn't give a goddamn about films that came out 20 to 30 years before he was even born. How about that? Look, teenagers today don't go out and buy or rent DVDs and all that kind of stuff. Okay, they're not worried about that. They don't care about that stuff. So no, he's not living under a rock. He goes to the movies every week like I do. Boy, he has absolutely no investment in these people from the 80s. He's not invested in Luke Skywalker. He doesn't know who Dan Aykroyd is. He doesn't know who Sigourney Weaver is. He's never heard of Beverly Hills Cop. So so let's let's just let's be for real. Yes, we are kind of tied to that movie culture that goes back in the 80s and 90s. But most of the kids today are not. So let's just get over it. That's why no one went out to see the Han Solo movie. I mean, I could make a whole video on that. That's a whole nother topic. I'm not going to get into that. But suffice it to say, there's not a whole lot of people invested in these characters in Terminator Dark Fate, except for people like us who are very attentive to movies and go back and watch these older movies. And to be fair, so if you're a moviegoer in this generation, uh, maybe you've seen Terminator Genesis, maybe you've seen Terminator Salvation, but you didn't see Terminator 1, 2, or 3 back, back in the day, okay? And let's face it, Terminator 4 and 5 really just kind of muddied the waters. They weren't in line with 1 and 2. So the franchise has really been all over the place, and your casual follower of the franchise really doesn't understand all the nuances of the dynamics that they started out with in Terminator 1 and 2. And that's, you know, that's sort of an ongoing problem, but that, that's sort of re the reality of it. So, for example, if you're a casual viewer of the franchise, you're saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, the Terminator, wasn't he like this ruthless bad guy? in the films sent back to kill a whole bunch of people 
how, how come like now he seems like a good guy you know I don't fully understand how that's possible and then if you went on to explain it to that person you'd have to say no 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 hold on that that original Terminator was killed but there's other Terminators they just happen to look like him and they were sent back by the resistance uh, to, to defend the guy and even if you're trying to explain it it can be a little confusing to somebody how all these different Terminators relate to one another especially since they get killed off in every film all right so what they do here is that they, uh, as I said, reassemble a lot of familiar plot points. I have no problem with that. I like that. I, I like those plot points. Uh, they reassemble all these different plot points in sort of a, a, a different kind of way, in a logical way that reunites Sarah Connor with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And basically they decide they're going to basically retire the John Connor saga, if you will. Now, I have perfectly no problem with that. I kind of feel that they took the John Connor saga as far as they could. I know a lot of people have a problem with that. I particularly don't have a problem with that. As I said, I kind of feel they've taken that character as far as they needed to. Now you could say, oh, but there's so much more they can do with John Connor. Look, I'm sort of done with John Connor. I have no problem with them bringing up somebody new, Daniel Ramos. That's fine with me. A new young person with her own story, etc., etc. You know, moving forward, I have no problem with a newcomer giving her her own little journey and all that kind of stuff. All right, so let me talk about a few of the things I liked about the film. Uh, number one, I love the opening sequence. I thought that was like stunning. That was like mesmerizing, seeing all them people like de-aged and everything very well done now if you are a fan of those original two films you were probably like blown away by that whole scene if you were a newcomer you didn't see those original films it probably seemed kind of interesting but you know nothing special but if you are invested in those first two films I'm sure you would be blown away by seeing them people de-aged back to, you know the 1980s and 90s that was like fantastic seeing that so I love that whole that whole scene and then secondly yeah I do like that they revisited a lot of these familiar plot points of you know the fact that they fall out from the sky that they take the clothes of the people watching them and everything that the guy was walking around asking have you seen Daniel Ramos just like the Terminator was asking have you seen Sarah Connor you know all that type of stuff again None of that means anything to anybody who's not familiar with 1 and 2. At any rate, that's fine with me. Now, frankly, the newest Terminator, this new advanced Terminator, the Rev-9, I think they're calling him, very similar to the T-1000, who had the molten abilities and shape-shifting abilities. Very similar, not going to lie. Now, to be fair, I kind of like that molten metal transformation process more than I like kind of this black tarry transformation not gonna lie but I can overlook that now they did kind of spice this guy up with the ability to split apart and I thought that was kind of cool how they did that now now I will say that I would have liked that the two versions of the guy had a little dynamic between themselves you know that one would have one kind of personality and the other would have like a slightly different personality and they kind of played on that a little bit but they didn't do that they were basically of the same mindset okay that's all right with me now i did like when arnold schwarzenegger was fighting the the new terminator probably would have liked to have seen a little more of that but then again there was a lot of fighting but if you grew up with terminator 1 and terminator 2 you're used to seeing arnold schwarzenegger you know doing a lot of more dramatic fighting one-on-one -on -one. Here, they set this up more as an ensemble fighting team, where it's kind of four on one, so to speak. I did like the Grace character. I did like the Danielle Ramos character. Now, moving forward, and I've done some reading on this, this was supposed to be the first installment of a planned trilogy of films. In other words, they had an outline for three films, and the 
future of the second and third installment was basically going to hinge on the success or failure of this first installment, so to speak. And based on the reception of the movie and the box office from the opening weekend, it doesn't look like they're going to continue with this trilogy and revisit these characters. But I certainly wouldn't rule out that the Terminator franchise is not going to come back in some type of form down the road. I just can't see this as being the end of the Terminator franchise altogether, but we will see. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.